I have a guess on who Satoshi Nakamoto is. And I'm totally serious. Okay, I've been reading everything about cryptography, uh, the crypto revolution, and I think I stumbled upon a good guess. I looked up on Wikipedia. This is not one of the guesses. And, you know, I understand a lot of people who follow my channel here are not really following, trying to figure out who Satoshi Nakamoto is. We're all trying to make millions on, on cryptocurrency. But if you have anyone who knows anything about this, if you can forward it or, a, you know, a Facebook news group, I want to get some honest feedback because I think I have a good guess here. So here's the deal. The first thing that just has fascinated me about this question is how does somebody keep a secret like this? I understand that when you launch it, it's like, okay, it's, you know, cryptography, it's secret, the government might not like it, and you want to stay underground. I understand that. But now, I mean, this thing is, it's the greatest, you know, if Satoshi Nakamoto revealed himself now, it's like, okay, so he's a billionaire, or she is a billionaire, uh, is, you know, will be praised, it's not going to be put in jail. I mean, how does somebody keep this secret? I mean, I'm just, it just fascinates me. But then I got, I think I figured out how. So there's a book, great book, by the way, if you're interested in this topic. It's called Crypto, How the Rebels Beat the Government um, by Stephen Levy. And so this book is all about how, so cryptography really started, um, this fire's cooking right now. Uh, cryptography, um, was, was really started by the government. So in America, there's the NSA, National Security Administration, um, which in the 70s, it was top secret to even say the word NSA. And so they had, and the government had the, the best cryptographers in the world. And their setup was, they had the best cryptography, they could keep their own government stuff secret, and the public had worse cryptography and they could always crack and break into it and so they could spy on anybody and they could hide their own stuff. They liked it that way and they wanted to keep it that way, but obviously they lost control um, and, and it broke away. Now the main reason they lost control was the public private key discovery. That was key because people understood, we, we, when, when cryptography got good enough, you know, it was like, okay, I can speak privately to you, but how do you initiate that conversation? Because you have to sort of share a key in order to start being private. And that was, the, that was a big trick. So by figuring out a way to make this public key, private key system work, solved that problem. And that became the foundation of, of, all, of not only cryptography, but now the cryptocurrency. And keep in mind, this book I'm talking about was written before Bitcoin even came out. Anyways, so... Um, now, just a little bit about this public key discovery. It, it was known to be discovered by, if you maybe have heard of RSA, it was Rivest, Shamir, and Adelman, uh, stands for RSA. They spent, they were, they, they, they spent four months together where just every day intense coming up with theories and breaking their own code and learning from that and going back and forth. And after four months came up with the public key discovery. And they received great fame from that. They started companies, RSA Security, and others. And now, imp and then implementing this public key into into software. But there's a twist to the story, an interesting twist. So, meanwhile, England has its own spy agency, and that's called GCHQ, Government Communications Headquarters. It turns out, so the RSA and the public key discovery in America was done by the public, not by the government not by NSA. In England, their government agency figured out public key cryptography three years before the RSA team figured it out in America. But it was uh, the spy agency thing. They also didn't, they discovered it, but they didn't really know what to do with it and they didn't implement it. They kind of sat on it. And they were spy agency. They're not going to announce it. They didn't publish any papers. They didn't tell anybody. So three years later, it's discovered in America, and you know, and, and and then, you know, the people who discovered it, this RSA team, receives great fame. They make money. They start companies. MIT and Stanford have a famous battle over patent rights. All this is going on, while England says nothing about the fact that they actually discovered it, or the people who discovered it. I'll get that, get to that in a sec, or maybe I'll get to that right now. So. 
in England, there was a guy, James Ellis, who um, you know, had an idea that public private key system could work or something about that, that it, he had an idea of how something like that could work. And there was a new guy he gave it to, this guy Clifford Cox. And he said to him, here's the problem, figure it out. And he figured it out. And one night, Clifford Cox discovered a, the system that is now used for public and private key cryptography. And one night by himself. Compared to, remember in America, they took four months, three guys took four months to figure it out. So this guy's pretty smart. Did he get any recognition? No, not only did he not get recognition, the British, so the British government was like, they're watching patent fights over public-private key in America with big sums of money saying nothing for 20 years. It wasn't until 1997 till they revealed, actually, we discovered, you know, the, the English, said you know actually we discovered public the private public private key system and in fact so this guy in the end this guy james ellis gets really all the credit for that and he's passed away he's not my satoshi nakamoto guest but this clifford cox now i don't know he's even in the book i read he doesn't seem to get that much credit but i'm just i'm blown away by the figuring out he discovered public private key system in one night by himself this guy knows his shit. He's pretty smart. And so here we have Clifford Cox, a, a genius when it comes to cryptography, who has lived a life in secrecy and has a proven record of keeping secrets. The secret of he discovered and he's watching other people make money and fight over bragging rights and patents over something that he discovered and never said a word. Now there's also um, information, there's also, as you know, reading about, well, who's Satoshi Nakamoto? Uh, some of Satoshi Nakamoto's writings use a UK spelling. Clifford Cox is from England. Um, and there was some IP, there was some analysis, I couldn't refine it to give you the reference, where um, they said it was used, he had the UK spellings, but it, the communications seemed to be coming from America. Clifford Cox is an English guy who moved to America. He's left the GCHQ, um, but he's still, you know, for him, so that's my guess, okay? Clifford Cox is a genius who's lived in uh, secrecy, who's been working on this stuff for a very long time, I think it should be looked into. I mean, at the least, I, I do really believe that Satoshi Nakamoto probably came from, is someone who retired from NSA or GCHQ, somebody who lived their whole life in secrecy, was one of the top cryptographers their whole life, uh, and just you know spent their whole life working on this in secret, and they came up with it. But I am making a leap and picking one name and saying it is uh, Clifford Cox. And that's uh, C-O-C-K-S. Um, and is there anything else I wanted to say about that? No, that's my guess. And I, I, I'm serious. I'd like to see, you know, on the, on the Wikipedia, I see some of the guesses that people have made about who Satoshi Nakamoto is. You know, Elon Musk. It's like, well, how would it be? That's, that's a ridiculous guess. I see some of these guesses out there are ridiculous. My guess is not ridiculous. I want, I want someone to look into it, forward it to someone who, who knows, and let's see if there's any uh, reality to this. And I, I, I don't know if it's, I mean, I, one thing I've thought about too is, is it bad to out somebody who wants to be secretive? Um, you know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, the reality is this is a very... This is clearly, obviously, if we find out who created Bitcoin, they're clearly a genius. And meanwhile, this guy Clifford Cox deserves some attention anyways because he appears to be someone who has lived a life of undeserved, you know, he probably doesn't have a ton of money unless he has his Bitcoin hidden, uh, you know, hasn't received much recognition. Um, and we prob he probably could share more information and help in the world with this revolution that is happening. So I think it's good to give him a little recognition. And um, let's see, maybe he, maybe he is Satoshi Nakamoto.